Hey, I'm going to show you how to make a cool hologram effect with geometry nodes and an iPhone. Write a song for your video thing Showing off your cool effects Hey, this is going to be using Blender 2.93, which has geometry nodes and all the fun stuff included with that. And because of that, um, this is only going to work in cycles because we're importing the geometry node information into the shader, which is only applicable in cycles. Um, so unfortunately, I can't, I can't show off what I'm doing while I'm recording this because it would be too insensible with my graphics card. Um, in addition to that, you're also going to need an iOS device. I think anything that has a face ID will work, um, which goes back, I think, a while. And we're going to be using a paid app, well, a paid feature of a free app. It's called Record 3D. It's pretty cool. Um, basically uses face the face ID cameras and the, the front-facing camera to gather both the color data and the depth data and turn it into a... Um, RGBD video, I think is what it's called. It's where it has the color on the right side and the depth map as a, a element of the hue on the left side. And um, because Blender is great with videos like that, we're going to use that to decode all the stuff and um, make it pretty pretty fast to import that stuff, which is pretty cool. Uh, the, the paid feature to export the video is $3, so you know that's a little hurdle, but um, I think it's pretty affordable for what it does, and it's pretty cool. Um, and it's great to support uh, a developer too. So. The blend file for this is in the description below. There are some fancier nodes that took me a while to get set up, so I don't want to have to like have you recreate those or anything. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll just be able to drag your video in and it'll just work. Um, and you can customize everything and, and figure out how to uh, make it look cool in your project. So this is uh, Record 3D. This is my face in Record 3D. Basically, what you can do here um, is, is adjust kind of the depth of it. If you want a real clean portrait of like some video call or something, if you're if you're pretending that's what it is, um, you want to cut out a lot of the background stuff, so you can kind of use a slider to do that. Um, then you just hit record, do your performance thing, and uh, you know that's it. Uh, something you want to pay attention to is lighting. I used a single light like just above my camera when I was doing it, and that seemed to look kind of cool. Um, I think if you did a more neutral lighting that was more balanced, you might have more fun going back into it later and trying to relight it and stuff. One other thing to note on this, when you're recording your performance, uh, pay attention to the background. If you have a very light background, that'll make kind of the separation between the two harder. Um, so ideally the background would be black so that any pixels around the edge would just, you know, they'd be black and they wouldn't show up, be uh, shining through. Um, but it doesn't have to be completely black, just a lot darker than your subject. Something I thought was kind of fun was thinking through like how this would actually be recorded in your lore or whatever. Like I, I used it on a stand and made it so it was fixed um, as if it was some terminal that someone was accessing or something. I thought that would be kind of a neat neat idea. Um, but obviously like if it's a handheld device, like that sort of motion might fit into whatever you're doing. Uh, it might make it look more chaotic and a little more um, uh, impactful in, in terms of uh, the story you're trying to tell or whatever. Um, once you get it ex uh, recorded, you need to export it. Um, <laughs> you have to slide it just a little bit and then hit export. It'll look like this. There'll be a look a RGBD video in .mp4. You want to click that, and then that'll export it into files. We'll see a bunch of dates of when we recorded stuff. Uh, and then when you go in here, you'll see RGBD underscore video. Um, and then um, that'll be an mp4 file. And there's also a metadata.json file, which you also need. So get those files on your computer somehow, um, and then we'll start plugging stuff in. So in addition to the video file you're exporting, you're also going to get this metadata.json file. And there's a couple numbers in here that are important for um, the geometry nodes uh, attributes that you want to you want to copy in. Um, for me, I didn't experience this a whole lot, so I don't know what the actual um, data is, uh, is here. But it obviously gives you the width and the height, um, which would go into your width and pixels in here, in the bottom right here. But then the important things I think are important, I don't know if they actually are, uh, is the, the K here, the intrinsic matrix. Uh, you're going to want to copy these numbers as you see them. Like So this is the first one, 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, from what I've seen, the last three aren't important, so I didn't include those. Um, if I figure out that they are important, I'll put more fields here, and you'll see that in the, in the file. Uh, but so you put the first first six values here, of which K zero and K four are, are the only ones that matter. I think, um, from what I've seen with my iPhone, it might be different on other devices or um, 
you know, different setups or whatever, but um, you want to get those put in. And once you have um, all that set here, the rest of the values you can kind of leave alone for now. Um, the two the two spots you're going to want to put your actual video into are going to be uh, the texture of the geometry nodes. So you want to select the hologram, select, um, go to your texture menu, and then select the geometry nodes depth is what it's called. Um, and then go down to image and then um, open up your MP4. Um, and then you can do the auto, auto frames thing and then just make sure it says uh, auto refresh. Cyclic isn't important, uh, but I have it on just for fun. It should be on non-color, but I don't think that matters. And then I think clip is also important. At some point I made all these decisions, but I can't remember if there was a sub like it made a substantial difference or not. Um, and then interpolation is kind of interesting. This will basically change some of the way things look a little bit. Um, I'm leaving it on just because it gives it a little bit of a different look that I like. I think works with the effect, but you can play with it. Um, see what you like better. And then the other spot is in the actual shader. Um, and that is just this texture. And this same thing as before, just make sure it's on auto, auto refresh. Um, if you do leave it on non-color, um, you're going to want a gamma node here like this. Uh, you can, I'm sure there's an exact value you can figure out to put here. I just kind of played around with it until it looks right. Uh, if you don't want to mess with that and you want to try to get exact values, you can use the, RGB, uh, the sRGB space. Um, that just might affect the depth map in a way that is kind of kind of weird, but who knows, probably not. Hey, so I thought I'd jump into the geometry nodes here and talk about some of what I did. Um, and hopefully someone with more like camera projection knowledge can jump in and, and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, if I'm doing it wrong, I'm, I'm pretty sure none of it's right. Uh, but it looks nice, and that was my goal. Um, and so hopefully that's helpful to people that don't care about that stuff. Um, but basically we're, we're throwing away any geometry we had in the actual mesh, um, starting our own with basically a grid of uh, points to the same size as the actual image that's incoming. Uh, and we're using the built-in UV map from that, from that grid to um, do a sample texture lookup. Um, this is defined in the actual thing here. And that's all set up correctly. It's set up as non-color, but I don't know that that really matters with this. Um, since it's only hue, I don't think the gamma is even considered in this situation, but at any rate, um, that gets imported into this T variable, which then gets, gets separated and gets passed into this first um, huge little block. Uh, so this basically converts RGB to, to HSV at least H. We only care about the H. That's all we're converting it to. Um, this just does some min-maxing, uh, and then has, there's three different situations for the, the R values, or based on the R value or, or the uh, G value. Um, and that gets dumped in and eventually dumped out as a number between 0 and 360. Um, so the, the actual math here isn't important. Um, it's just because, like, as in shaders, like, we have access to hue. But in, in uh, geometry nodes, we don't, so we have to do this conversion manually. Hopefully, eventually, this is a shader that, or a, a node that gets added to geometry nodes, at which point we won't have to worry about it anymore. Um, then we go through some various converting uh, and, and assign it to the disease value, which makes it actually offset. Um, and then we pull in that value along with some other fancy values from what's called an intrinsic camera matrix, I believe which is basically like the, the math that defines what a camera is and where it's looking and how it's oriented and skewed and whatever. Um, and so I try to use some of those same labels, like the K value, that's what the, that's what the matrix is. And this is each value of that, of that matrix, or at least it's part of them, some of them, we don't use all of them. Uh, but basically those turn into the, the focal things and the offsets. I'm not entirely sure, but it, this is what I found. Uh, and this is what it does. It basically just scales it out based on the depth. That's what makes it look like a cone, basically. Um, so it does that, uh, actually assigns it to the position, and then we go into this section, which uh, separates, it kind of cuts off the front and back because of like, uh, there's some, some noise data in the front and back that we want to kind of cut off. And so right now I've set it to uh, 10, 10 thousandths and two for the front and back. And those are values you define in your geometry nodes uh, options here on the, in the, um, modifier panel. Uh, yeah, and those get actually separated. Uh, then we do some 
math to look at how close uh, all the points in the mesh are to the projector point, which is kind of a stylistic thing. Um, you can take this out or tweak it however you want, but the way I was thinking of it was that when this fictional device like projects these hologram points out, the farther away they get, the larger, larger they be, just because that's how light works. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm scaling it. And that also makes a lot of the noise that's real close to the projector disappear. Um, so that's what that's doing. So after the object is instanced, which is our pixel here, which can be anything. Um, I'm using a triangle just because it has a lower poly count than a plane, but um, you know, you could have spheres, you could have some wacky objects, depending on how big your video is. You know, maybe your computer can handle that, mine can't. Um, we're taking that. Um, after this point, all the data we were previously messing with kind of gets destroyed because we're going from one point to three. Um, and, and you know, those old points don't exist anymore. So we have to kind of rewrite some of the data we were using um, in order to access it in the shader, which I think is kind of cool. I didn't realize that initially, um, but all that's available there still. So um, all the stuff we just pull over, like the position, we dump into the coordinate, um, just a custom variable we're using here. And then all of the intrinsic data or intrinsic matrix stuff we're dumping into these FX, FY, TX, and TY variables along the scale and our distance from our projector point here, which we're all gonna use in the shader. So in the shader, all the data gets dumped in here um, into this little node group here. And um, just some quick explanation, like this mapping node is taking, um, is scaling the image down to, or scaling the UV coordinates down basically to one half of it then we're doing basically the reverse operations that we did in that previous node um, to figure out, like if, if you have a point in 3D space, where was that on the texture coordinate that we originally uh, generated from that, that matrix, from that grid that we did in the geometry nodes. Um, and so once we do that math and figure that out, we can dump that into this mapping node, which just kind of moves around um, so we can select the point we want because we were originally using you know, a different coordinate system. And once we have that, then it goes into the actual footage and grabs the data we want. So if we're using the non-color space, we want to adjust the gamma, just do it by eye. I don't, there's probably an exact number here. Um, if you do want exact values for your emission shader for, for something that you're doing with that, just use a sRGB and uh, you know live with the, the kind of wonky um, diff map. It might not affect that. Like I said, it might be, you know, it might not mess with that at all. I use a principled BSDF shader here uh, combine some strong emission with some basic roughness and stuff. I, I can't really notice a difference. Um, I think if you had more interesting lighting in your scene, this could be kind of cool. Um, you do inherit a lot of the lighting from your actual video footage you record. So if you try to, if you record something a little more neutral, that might work a little bit better for, um, relighting it or something, which it could be kind of cool. Um, but obviously they're all points. So like any shadows they cast are kind of, kind of be weird. Um, but maybe that's, maybe that'd be a cool effect, you know, we're using this distance from the projector point to kind of fade out the, um, shader near the projection point. It kind of makes it so that that noise that is, is very close to the, the point, um, doesn't become too obtrusive. And it kind of, you know, I was trying to make, make it make sense in my little, like the lore of how this, you know, thing works. Um, but it's up to you, you know, you can make them, you can make it the opposite. So it's like they fade as they go out or something, or, um, you know, basically do whatever you want with that distance there. The things I think you want to play around with, um, uh, mostly in here, at least, uh, is the scale. I have this set to the width. I'm not sure what actually makes sense here. Um, but just play around with it until the depth looks right. This only affects like the actual X and Y, not the, not the Z depth. Um, and then also the, uh, then play around with the cutoff as well, uh, to, to kind of get rid of the messy data you don't want, but maybe you want that, you know, it's up to you. Um, there is one weird thing about the scale and I'm, I'm sure there's a way to actually do this in the geometry nodes and in the, in the calculations there. So you don't have to have this. Um, but it's always going to be viewing, uh, Z is up and down. So you have to rotate it in degrees if you want it to be like facing a certain way. And then you want the Y to be stretched to match the aspect ratio. And like I said, I think there's a way to do it in there where it's not the case, but I didn't I didn't take the time to do that. And I just have it stretched to um, to 1.3333. So um, if you're interested in messing around with that, feel free to do that. Cause I can imagine where you'd want to be able to scale it um, for something like if you wanted to have it kind of like come out like, like a TV when it turns on, 
that could be like a cool effect. Um, and that's where you'd kind of want it to be able to uniformly scale it. Um, and so there's some, somewhere in there where you'd multiply the aspect ratio of like the, when it, when it does the, um, when it kind of explodes the points into their actual, actual pixels or whatever they are on the, in the actual, um, geometry, you'd want to multiply by 1.333. The calculation for, to do all this stuff is pretty intensive. So like, you're not going to be able to play it back in the viewport at all. Um, which kind of sucks because it would be kind of cool to see this move, but just with between the the hue conversion and then the actual point conversion and then just grabbing the data from that video file, it's pretty intensive. There might be other ways to do it where it's not um, not quite that bad. I'm not sure. I haven't played around with it that much. And the notes for the actual um, video format, they talk about how, how poor quality it is, but honestly, it kind of adds a little bit of texture to a lot of the stuff. Um, a lot of imperfections that you might see in a device like this. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool, but in the future, it would be cool to have like a super high resolution version of whatever this is and import it in here. Um, it's just the data that it was stored in, to my knowledge and what I, from what I've seen, isn't something that's easily imported like a video video format um, is in Blender, which is why, I think that's why it was so appealing to me, just because it was right there. I could just, I could just decode that data. So here's a couple notes just on the scene. Um, I have a camera pointing to this camera point, which I animate throughout the shot. Um, and then it's also focusing on this focus, which is lined up to where the eyes are for this projector thing, which I thought would be where it would be focusing. Um, then there's this little pixel element, which is really small. I don't know where it is here. Um, somewhere in here, but it's just three vertices and then obviously a face. Um, you want to pay attention to the scale of that. So you either want to make it, um, you know, the right scale for a pixel or, you know, if you want doing something else with it, uh, you know, play around with that. Obviously when you scale it, you need to do it in edit mode or scale then apply the scale for it to show up in the geometry nodes because it doesn't look at the scale here. Um, I have a plane that I, I was going to do something with but then just kind of ignored. Uh, and then this little projector thing, which I mocked up real quickly, like Ian Hubert style. Um, and then I slapped this image on the back. I thought it might make sense for like this image preview to be on the back of it. So you can see like the 2D image of what's actually being projected. Um, not a whole lot of effort was put into that. I just thought it was cool. But uh, inside of it is this projector point, which is actually the, the same origin as your geometry node um, hologram object. And uh, this is where all the points kind of converge. So this is the point that's used in the geometry node calculation to figure out um, how far the, this, it is away from stuff, which I think is useful. And then finally the speaker is just a random, it's just playing the audio. So I can try to sync it up, but it wasn't working right. So you can ignore that. So I think that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, make an issue on the GitHub or just comment here and I'll, I'll try to look at it. Um, the GitHub is probably a better, better location though, because I'll watch that. Um, yeah, if I have any updates um, on this file, I'll put them in the GitHub and uh, yeah, I can go from there. I also have the, the actual files I used here, like the video file recorded. Um, if you don't have an iPhone or, or, uh, or just mess around with it in general, you know, feel free to do that.